Hello and welcome to Michael Pepper Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some thoughts having to do with the Nothing Phone 2A, the OnePlus 12, and the S24 Ultra. Yes, I know, different price segments, but that is the point of this discussion. Do you really kind of get more as you go up? And here are some of my initial thoughts after using these for a different amount of times. I've had the S24 Ultra for about six, seven weeks now. I've had the OnePlus 12 for about a month, and I've had the Nothing Phone 2A for a couple weeks now. So my initial issue is I'm having some struggles between the OnePlus 12, the Nothing 2A, and the S24 Ultra. Let me begin this with the OnePlus 12. Between the exceptional battery life, fast charging, and really good cameras, the features they've added that were missing from the OnePlus 12, such as wireless charging and video over USB, it's just about the perfect phone, in my opinion, in a balance between things. With the Nothing Phone 2A for $349, the fluidity is just slightly behind devices that cost, you know, two, three times as much or more. For me, it's all about the simplicity of the UI and the OS without a bunch of extras. The camera is good enough, even in kind of good lighting to moderate lighting. The battery is up there amongst some of the best I've had. Being able to get me through two days when I'm using it kind of at a half pace situation, you know, four to five hours screen on time for two days, I can easily get eight, ten hours of screen on time, if not more. And that includes taking some photos and some videos in there. 45 watt charging, which matches the likes of Samsung, beats Apple and Google in their own battery charging speeds. You get the customization of Android without kind of the whole kitchen sink approach. You know, Samsung likes to do that. We'll get into that in a little bit. Speaking of Samsung, the S24 Ultra. For me, it comes down to the edge panel, Dex. Apps that open very quickly. The way that they've managed to handle some of the performance with the newer chips seems to be a little bit more fluid and a little bit higher pace than OnePlus 12 does for me on occasion. But in most instances, they're very similar. The S Pen for editing photos and thumbnails and writing on documents and being able to remotely control and use some of those unique features. The cameras are excellent for most of my usage. I'll say I'm mostly a nature photographer. Now, when it gets into photographing people, that's when it struggles, especially in low light. Now, if you're outside, all of these will do excellent outside, and I will be doing camera samples for each of these devices over the coming weeks to show you guys in videos as well. So apart from, you know, the motion and the low light, video recording and voice isolation has been really good. I've been using it for some of my videos. You might not even be able to tell that I've been using the S24 Ultra to record some of my content. Also, the tie-in with my Tab S9 Ultra as far as being able to use um, wireless decks and enable the second screen function on the Tab S9 Ultra so that I don't have to use hotspots. I plan on making a video to demo that as well. Now let's talk about in order of features and price from the lowest to the highest. The Nothing Phone 2A is the simplest and does enough for most of my daily tasks while being affordable and providing some unique things that kind of keep it on its own and really provide some unique use cases for me. The glyphs on the back here, the lights on the back, what I really like is the ability to have a normal flashlight. And we'll see there, normal flashlight, really bright. But then if I press and hold, it turns into a glyph, which on camera is going to be harder to get, but it's softer light. And you can use that as a nice fill light when taking photos, videos. One of the other features is multiple smartphones have this where they'll flash the front screen to fill in light but the way it does it is just so soft 
and it's got a little bit of a yellowness to it so it's natural so it feels like it's not creating a green or a blue or a red hue to the skin it just creates this natural feel and it looks natural even in low lighting so some of these things for me have kept it as I would say excellent especially in the lower price performance and then the chip the MediaTek 7200 Pro is up there I would say it kind of reminds me of the performance of maybe last year's flagship just slightly behind the 8 gen 2 and in some cases on par with like an s22 ultra s23 ultra device the oneplus 12 though i will say is a step above there being about twice the price it really should get some extra features oxygen os you know it's fairly simple but their one-handed mode, smart sidebar, and a few other things that are nice to have, place it nicely as uh, up at the flagship level, get 50 watt wireless charging, 80 watt wired charging, and the sidebar is not quite as nice as the edge panel, but I like having the option if you want to quickly go into multitask split screening with it, being able to put some of your favorite apps there and shortcuts like that are pretty nice to have getting the snapdragon 8 gen 3 the flagship level cameras especially that main camera and in my opinion they beat out samsung at a lot of the levels for most of the usage including at zoom up to about 30 times the fast post processing as well so i don't have as much issues in low light now all these devices suffer in low light, especially when you get really, really dark. Even an iPhone gets there. But in the typical lighting, like just throwing on your lights in your house, even if you have them turned all the way up, the artificial lighting, some devices really suffer with that. I would say uh, video quality is on par with Samsung and Apple and just about any other high-end um, video that I've used from smartphones. And you get extra features without feeling kind of overwhelmed. And the super bright display has been really nice to have. The 80 watt wired charging or 100 watts if you get the right charging block has been nice to have. On those days where you're like, well, I've still got, you know, 60% charge at the end of the day. So you can go through a whole entire second day. And then let's say you forget to throw it on the charger at the end of the second day. You get up on the third day and there's you know, 10% charge left. Being able to plug it in and quickly get up to full charge in like 20 minutes has been really, really, really nice. It's one of those devices that like, if you're someone who doesn't want to have to throw their device on the charger every night, it's been awesome to have. Lastly, let's touch on the S24 Ultra. Um, in some aspects, it feels slightly above the OnePlus 12 for me, as far as kind of a full package. And things like dex mode and since i have the samsung tablet like i explained earlier can take advantage of the ability to link them together for things via second screen or smart view um, the edge panel for me it's the best implementation of that multitasking type of thing you're able to have contacts in there you're able to have things like your calendar in there weather um, quick access to certain things almost like widgets compass when you go to open an app, it opens it full screen as opposed to a window. You can do where you press and hold on to it to bring it into the windowed mode. The large flat display is another thing for me. I've really appreciated having a flat display as far as especially using the S Pen. And when you're typing and you're close to the edges, having it be flat so it's easier to kind of touch the edge without feeling like your finger is going to fall off the side has been really nice to have the downside i will say or one little thing with that too is their update history for me in the last couple years has been better and oneplus can be a little bit sketchy with that and this being my first nothing device i don't really know but so far i've had Four updates already with this device and so it seems to be that they're really listening to their customers and uh, you know improving cameras and fluidity of the OS and pushing out updates as fast as they can but 
Samsung seems to be more reliable. Of course, they've been around for a while and them working with Google kind of pushes that up there. The downside is that, th you know, Samsung has this kitchen sink approach. They throw everything in there to see what sticks. And sometimes that means certain things will run in the background and you'll have to go in into the battery settings and disable those things. Also, the maximum 45 watt charging kind of throws things off. Well, battery life is excellent and is, I would say for me is in the realms of that, you know, eight hour battery life, one plus 12, I can get 10, 12, 14 hours of battery life and being able to know that sometimes I'll get two or three days out of usage on it. And then if I forget throwing on a charger and it charges up super quick, where with the others, you're talking about hour, hour and a half for a full charge. You know, if a half charge can last me a day, but if I'm going away for a weekend and going to be somewhere, know that I can just throw it on a charger like that or have a car charger that charges at 80 watts and throw it on there and be good to go. Samsung doing 45 watts on a $1,300 device and not even getting into the fold, having 45 watts or 25 watts on an $1,800 device. But for me, the fact that Samsung is behind OnePlus and Vivo with their charging speeds, the camera performance indoors, and some of the low light lag stuff, which causes me to get, you know, the blurry pictures of my wife and my son kind of put it at lower level if you really care about the cameras. And that's why I'm talking about I struggle with these things. I wish they focused on things rather than kind of throwing everything in there, which sometimes gives you mediocre experiences on everything as opposed to really solid ex high level experiences on those things that they're focusing on as a company when we think about other companies when you look at nothing and they're focusing on kind of the general user experience as well as giving some unique features or apple who they may not have the best hardware and they don't have the customization but they look at the market that they're going at and they're not trying to give features to everybody with the possibility of causing some hindrance on the features that may really matter where Samsung, I wish they would step up on that. You know, giving us cameras that aren't just uh, trying to zoom way out there, or high megapixel counts, where those things are just numbers and just specs to me. If they would spend their time on focusing on low light and mid light conditions, where most of the people spend their time inside, you know, in or, you know, if you're in your vehicle and you're taking a picture of your son because they, or your kid or your wife or whatever, or you're at home, or even outside walking, taking walks and the artificial light at night and things like that, they're still a little bit suffering in those cases. I wish that they would just give us the same experience that we've asked for. They've given us the same poor low light capture speeds and low light performance for the last several years and it's gotten a little bit better and I've been pleasantly surprised with some of the low light stuff and I've taken pictures of flags that are moving and been able to capture it but it's pretty rare about 9 out of 10 times I get a laggy blurry photo and that's not acceptable for me. So with all of these things what would you pick which device would you pick are you someone that just needs your device for texting battery life you know you're gonna throw your fart your phone on the charger at night and so and 45 watts an hour charge is enough or a half an hour to get you probably through a day then something maybe like the nothing phone 2a it has those unique features you don't need a bunch, you know, need eSIM, you're not going to be doing all the extra stuff. But maybe you need more than that. Maybe you need better cameras. Maybe you need the flagship performance. Maybe you do some gaming. Maybe you are someone who often forgets to plug in their phone. Then you have the OnePlus 12 and they've added, you know, wireless charging so you can throw it on a wireless charger in your car or at your office or whatever and video out so 
take it to a hotel and maybe they don't have very good st um, stuff to watch on the TV, you can plug in a, a cable. But maybe you're somebody who needs more than that and really you rely on signing documents and you rely on being able to zoom in and high zoom on certain things and you rely on being able to really get the maximum performance and you rely on a flat screen and a big screen and you rely on more improved customer support and reliability staying behind their devices where Samsung has stores you can go in some places or you can take it into a Best Buy to get repaired or you know you can easily get a hold of somebody and they're now talking about seven years support and they're a known name and the ecosystem of things and you're going to get a watch and you're going to get a tablet and you're going to do all this stuff and you have a Samsung TV, maybe you go with Samsung, but the choice is yours. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you really enjoyed this discussion, let me know as well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Sorry this was a long one, but I just had some thoughts so far. I'll be back, obviously, with more extended coverage on each of these products as I get to use them more and more. Thanks for watching. Peace and love.